Welcome to the first episode of Final Destinations. The goal of this series is to show you the various retirement locations and status of older aircraft. Using photos, videos, and reports from the entire aviation community, I hope to piece together enough information to paint a picture of each tale and their final destination. In this part one of the first episode, we are featuring the Northwest Airlines Boeing 727-100. Surprisingly, at least one or two of these aircraft are still potentially flying today. At over 50 years old, that's impressive. Northwest began receiving 727s in 1964 and ultimately retired all from scheduled use in 2003. Between leasing and owning, Northwest had over 100 727s work for their fleet. Anyone growing up in Minneapolis or Detroit in the 1970s and 80s would be very familiar with the excessive noise of the older classic jets, including the 727. November 460 US was retired at Northland Community College in Thief River Falls, Minnesota. Photos and videos of the aircraft in the hangar are available up until around 2014. It seems as though the aircraft has been removed since. I reached out to the college but did not hear back on if the aircraft was still there. The college website still has photos posted on their page and a couple videos are available on YouTube to see the aircraft at its final resting location. The next registration, November 461 US, ended up in Bedford, Massachusetts. Retired at a technical school known as East Coast Aerotech. This aircraft is visible in Google Earth up until 2007 at the Bedford Airport. Daryl Sarno captured an image of this aircraft back in 2000 while it was parked on the ramp. It is unknown at this time where the aircraft is now or when it was broken up. According to a document online, the aircraft was registered in 2008 but then cancelled in 2017. Wyotech, the company that took over East Coast Aerotech, closed campuses that year. In the center of the field, you can see that there's an aircraft scrapping operation. Now to the other side of the world. November 462 US made it to Afghanistan. mazar i sharif Airport is now home. The aircraft ended flying service with Cam Air logos and a registration of YAGAA. In a video posted in 2017, we see that the aircraft was still being used for fire training. What I find most interesting in this video clip is the interior seems to be the original Northwest style of decor. This video, as of 2017, may be the most recent online media content of this aircraft. Back to the United States, this photo of November 463 US shows the aircraft in a short-lived transitional livery between the 1960s and 1970s. This aircraft was retired to North Texas Regional Airport around 1992-93. to The aircraft was scrapped as seen in this 1993 Flickr photo by user Paul. As we move to South America, November 464 US is most likely still a landmark near Mexico City International Airport. In this photo by Flickr user Prestwick Pioneer, you can see the aircraft as it sits alongside other retirement aircraft. The latest registration was XAASS. If you enter Street View, you can also track along the side of this aircraft. As we make our way towards Africa, or actually to Africa, November 465 US, as seen here in a photo by Ted Quackenbush at LAX 1987, ended its career at 4th of February Airport in Luanda back in 1996. The final registration was 5NMAM and the aircraft was scrapped in the middle of the airfield. November 466 US managed to end up in Istanbul. This aircraft became TCAJZ of Toros Air. The aircraft was seen derelict in 1995 in this photo by Captair Bus Erkan Karakas. The aircraft was probably scrapped shortly after.
Again, we go back to the USA. November 467 US was hijacked on November 24th, 1971 by one D.B. Cooper. This is a photo on the night of the hijacking. I'm not going to go into the story, however there are many resources to read up on, including original news footage on YouTube. Surprisingly, an aircraft with such history merely ended up at Greenwood, Mississippi for scrapping in 1996 as November 29 Kilo Alpha of Key Airlines as seen in this photograph by Jim Newton Photography. There was still a rumble of a 727 as recent as this year around El Dorado International Airport in and around Bogota, Colombia. November 468 US ended up with LAS Cargo, who has a handful of Boeing 727s still in service, including HK4154, which was November 468 US. This aircraft entered service in 1965. This means the aircraft is 55 years old. Surprisingly, there's another X Northwest 727 100 recently re residing there that I will touch on later. There is a fantastic one and a half hour clip of a recent flight with November 468 US and it's definitely a worthwhile watch on YouTube. November 469 US ended up at Oklahoma City Airport, KOKC. This aircraft's final assignment was with America Trans Air as November 287 Alpha Tango, and it was scrapped around 1995. November 470 US ended up off the coast of Key Biscayne near Miami back in 1993. This aircraft did not crash, it was intentionally put there as one of the first, if not the first, aircraft reef diving locations. Unfortunately, that tourist site was vandalized and further disrupted by a hurricane. Pieces are probably still scattered about if you scuba dive in that area. Let me know if you find anything. There's nothing too exciting to say for November 471 US. The aircraft was retired to North Texas Regional Airport and scrapped in and around 1992. With that said, in-flight 200 is due to release a model of this aircraft in the spring or summer of 2020. Note, I have already ordered mine. November 472 US. This aircraft is one of two 727s that made it into Aero Continente's fleet after a long list of service terms, including Pan American and America Trans Air. This photo taken by CPH Aviation, we can see the aircraft as it was stored for a while and then returned to Aero Continente as OB-1588. According to planelogger.com, this aircraft may or may not have been officially scrapped by 2010. November 473 US was also recruited by Aero Continente and assigned a registration of OB-1601. It finished out as a parts aircraft and scrapping as seen here by Flickr user Paul in 2004. In a more nostalgic and beautiful photo of November 473 US, here it is being prepped for delivery back in 1965 by photographer Pete Pizicek. Landing back in North America again, this tail, November 474 US, ended up at a technical college at Chandler Field Airport. In this 2002 photo by Mike Daniels, we can see the aircraft was stored near the roadway. 
In Google Earth, the aircraft was visible in 2003, but no longer visible after 2003. Possibly the technical college pulled out of the airport and the aircraft was scrapped. November 475 US was turned into a private jet for Clay Lacey Aviation, registered as November 724 Charlie Lima. Look up Clay Lacey if you don't already know about him. Many 727s have been turned into private jets. This one is formerly Northwest, so it fits for this video. Ryan Bomar posted a video tour of the aircraft in 2017, and it is a worthwhile watch. The aircraft can be seen in Google Street View, as well as in satellite maps up until 2019 at Van Nuys Airport. After August 2019, there is one image from October, and then the aircraft is not visible. If anyone has any updates, please feel free to comment, and thank you. November 476 was merely a scrapped bird around 1998. That is what I was going to say until I did some research and found out that the aircraft was also a San Diego Padres baseball team plane registered as November 105 RK. It as well is used in the movie The Pursuit of D.P. Cooper in 1981. Funny that they didn't use November 467 US, but it was flying for Piedmont Airlines, so I guess they couldn't. For more information, check out the Internet Movie Plane Database, impdb.org. The final resting location was Sanderson Field in Shelton, Washington. It is very neat to watch a real stuntman jump out of that aircraft in this movie. I think I'm going to watch this movie on the next movie night. November 477 US ended off in England at Lasham Airport. This is a smaller sized aircraft shopping shop. November 477 US was part of the Mexican Air Force before its last assignment as a private jet, VP-BAA, as seen in this 2008 photo by Alan Watkins. The aircraft seemed to be scrapped finally around 2013. As we move to the other side of the world again, the last location for November 478 US was Taba International Airport in Egypt. It is possible that this Google Earth satellite imagery from 2014 is actually C5-GAE of Rum Air or Air Rum. It is interesting where some of these planes end up. Last reports from planelogger.com show the aircraft may have been on sale back in 2011. Again, if you have any updates, Please feel free to comment. Here is a photo of November 479 US in 1978 by John Proctor. This aircraft was scrapped at North Texas Regional Airport in 1993. Not too much excitement here. November 480 US had a similar fate and ended up at North Texas Regional Airport and scrapped around 1993. Here is a photo of tail 480 from 1980 by Aero Icarus. There is also a 1400 scale model by Aero Classics of this tail. Jumping not only all the way back to Africa to 4th of February Airport in Luanda, we also see a jump to the registration of November 488 US. Northwest did not register 727s with November 481 US up to November 487 US. After Northwest, this aircraft flew for Emory Worldwide, Plan Air, and retired with Angola Air Charter as D2 FCL, and then scrapped around 2009. As we move back to South America again, 
November 489 US is possibly still flying with the Colombian Air Force. It has been using this aircraft since 2009. The aircraft is registered as FAC-1203 and is listed in multiple sources as being still in service up to this year. I have not been able to find very much footage, but there are tons of photos and it is visible in Google Earth over the last 10 years. November 490 US, like many other 727s, this aircraft ended its days at Roswell's graveyard. It ended service with UPS as November 902 Uniform Papa. It was being parted out around 2007 as seen in this photo by Radic Onyxiak. November 491 US was written off at Denver Airport. This tail unfortunately crashed into a bus in the fog on October 1st, 1997. This is what the nose looked like after the incident. There is more information on this at aviationsafety.net. In Roswell again, November 492 US was scrapped around 2007. A photo here we see November 492 US as November 415EX in 1991. It was last in service with UPS as November 903 Uniform Papa before scrapping. Here we see November 493 US in a better time. This 1980 photo by John Proctor features the Northwest livery when it was very plain but powerful. It remains a nostalgic reminder of when aviation was at one of its best times. This aircraft later became November 904 Uniform Papa and was scrapped around 2007. November 494 US was another Emery and UPS bird. This bird was scrapped around 2007 as November 905 Uniform Papa. One interesting photo to note is this one by Bob Logan. Check out the engine upgrades. Engine number two is noticeably different and the one in three are larger as well. I noticed most Northwest 727-100s did not see an upgrade like this. November 495 US ended up in Luanda. In this photo by Jetpix, we see it sporting a USPS livery and registered as November 413EX in 1999. The aircraft was still being scrapped in 2008 and more than likely is completely gone by now. November 496 US, the next registration in line, was also a USPS 727 in those classic colors in the end. Registered as 816EX, it was retired and mostly broken up around 2008 at Phoenix Goodyear Airport. This photo by Felix Goding captures November 816EX in 1991. Now we go all the way to Australia. November 497 US's legacy ended up here on September 29th, 2010, when it was scrapped at Cairns, Australia. Seen in a better time in 1978 by Flickr user George M757, this 727 went on to be a cargo bird and in the end for heavy lift cargo as RPC8016. There is a tough to watch video of the scrapping by Sir Steve and Cairns. Here are some scenes from the video. Please note I will have links to all full videos featured in this episode located in the description. We now move to the Philippines for November 498 US at Clark International, where this aircraft may still be sitting derelict. 
In Google Earth, as recent as 2018, you can see a 727 that we can assume is RPC8017. This is thanks to photographer Dirk Groth, who took this picture in 2017, verifying that the tail was still there. If anyone in the area can verify, then let me know in the comments. Before we get to the final tale, I would like to thank planelogger.com, rzjets.com, as well as all the photographers and those who have images of these aircraft that I was able to use in this video today. Our final tale is November 499 US. It was retired at Phoenix Goodyear Airport as November 417 EX and scrapped around 2007. David Atkinson photographed the aircraft in 2003 while awaiting its fate. I hope you enjoyed this first Final Destinations episode, and I would really appreciate feedback on how this episode was for you, the viewer. I'm looking to produce next episodes based on viewer feedback. Things such as if it's too long, if it's too slow, if it's too fast, if you'd rather see more images, if you like the map touring, just let me know what works best for you because I'm trying to make this entire process more exciting and more interesting for those watching. The next episode is featuring the Northwest Boeing 727-200 fleet. If you would like me to feature photos or videos you may have in the next episode, please contact me at ontheairplanes at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to the next episode.